Hello and uh, welcome to our tutorial. So in this tutorial we're going to look at um, a couple of basic modeling techniques. Um, we're going to look at um, lathing, which is if you if, very similar if you were making say the leg of a chair or something, you'd put it onto a machine tool that would spin a piece of wood that maybe would start out sort of rich as a kind of a, a cuboid kind of shape. Um, and then it would spin, you would hold, say, a chisel or something to it, and it would chip away <coughs> at the surface until it was cylindrical. So we're going to look at how we would do that in 3D. So I'm going to start here with my kind of genetic or generic sort of uh, setup here with my cube. I'm going to go into edit mode. Um, before I do that, let me turn on my keys so you can see what I'm doing. Um, so this is uh, my cube here, so I'm going to go into edit mode. Uh, all the Q, all the vertices are selected, so I'm going to go to uh, Vertex, Merge Vertices, at Center. So all of them, all eight of those vertices are now one vertex. They've all just uh, merged to one. And you can see down here in the bottom right, it says Vertices or verte Verts one of one. So I'm going to go to um, Front uh, Orthographic View. I'm going to press E to extrude. So I've just pressed E, taking my finger off it. Now I'm moving the mouse and I'm just gonna click here. Um, <clears throat> I haven't measured that or typed in a number, just using my eye. So I'm gonna press E again and move my mouse. And I'm gonna repeat that process by pressing E and moving the mouse. Um, I'm gonna do that a few times. And what I'm trying to make here is oh, like sort of a, a wine glass. Uh, now it's probably not the best designed wine glass in the world, but you'll get the idea. So this is sort of if you would take a, a cross section of a wine glass. Now I'm sort of matching my verts here. I don't have to do that. I don't. There doesn't have to be the same number on the inside uh, as there is on the outside. So the, these don't have to correspond. What's important is this one here and this one here are on this blue line on the z-axis. Now this one's not exactly there, so that means when I spin this I'll end up with a, a sort of a, a small hole in the middle. But we'll see what that looks like and we can always fix it. So I'm going to select everything, and because I'm in edit mode I have all of these tools here at my disposal. Um, now all of these tools are duplicated up in the menus, but we won't um, go searching for them because they're here at hand. And this is a tool we want to use, it's called spin. Um, now if I spin now, I will spin it around sort of the center of the mesh. Um, actually it probably will spin around the, this point here because that's where the 3D cursor is. So I'm going to press 7 and I'm looking for the from the top. So my 3D cursor is in the middle and I'm going to spin around that. So I'm going to click on spin and I get these two kind of handles here. I'm going to click on one of them and when I click on it it's done a full spin but rather than just leave it like that we'll have a look at the the spin tool so this is the spin tool here um, so I can type in how far I want it to go around so I could try to type in 180 for example and I want to do half the glass or I can type in 360 and it'll spin the whole glass and then steps here are the number of lines of vertices through um, this piece. Now one of the things that we're meant to explore in um, 3D computer graphics is the effect that vertex count has on how smooth something is. So at the moment we can see that this uh, we can clearly identify each face here. So as I increase my vertex count uh, it'll become smoother and more um, uh, like the surface was much smoother. So if I put a ridiculous number in here, like, you know, 120, then this would be a very, very smooth uh, exterior to the glass. Um, what's interesting about that is um, this will give us a great result. We, if you look down here, we have two and a half thousand verts in it, um, which is, you know, not a huge amount. But if we were to do that with everything in our computer game and make it look really smooth, then um, our computer game would be unplayable because we would have too much geometry and then 
the computer processor would have to identify the location of every single vert on every single frame and our game would eventually grind to a halt as it had to do that for many hundreds maybe thousands of objects so the vert count is kind of an interesting uh, number so for this exercise we'll leave it at 12 and I'm going to go back out here to object mode now after we have um, um, created it what we're going to look at is how it's shaded so at the moment we can see the line that separates the two faces so in blender I can tell it to shade smooth now this is doesn't look very good but it's trying to not show us um, those lines and you can just toggle between the two of them so I can put it back as flat or I can go back to uh, to smooth so when we're making an organic um, mesh like a human face or uh, the bonnet of a car for example we'll use this um, set up here a smooth shading and if we want to make uh, you know a gun or something that has um, you know hard surface modeling we'll use shade flat now we can always cheat a little bit we can add what's called a sub subdivision surface modifier and that will make it more rounded but again that will increase my vert count so if I click in here I can go add modifier and subdivision surface and you can immediately see that that looks better but my vert count is up at 984 now so I have paid the price in geometry for um, it looking better so lastly what we're going to do is we're going to kind of color it in um, so if I click on um, the rendered view here to see what it looks like it's basically white um, so that's fine we want to make it more look like like glass so let's do that let's um before we change the material that is on this object I'm gonna go shift a and I'm gonna add a plane and I'm gonna press s and 3 to scale it up and then I'm gonna go into edit mode and I don't want spin anymore so I'm gonna just go up here to select and I'm gonna left click on this hold down the shift key and I'm going to uh, select them and going to press E and Z. Again, I'm not typing in a number, I'm just doing it kind of by eye. And I'm making sort of a little box for this to render in. Um, so we'll leave this here, we'll give that a basic material. So Blender, when you open it, starts with a material called material. And we'll rename this white. And we'll make sure it is white. And it's not quite, so we'll just push it up all the way to the top so it's white and then we'll click on this guy here this is also white but we want this to have a new material so we'll click on this little icon here new material we'll call this glass so um, in my um, shader nodes here um, I'm, I'm just gonna select the um, the principal shader here this one and I'm gonna press the delete key you can see this has gone black because we've no input and I'm going to go shift A over here which is the add menu add shader glass and I'm just going to put that in there and this will give us sort of a uh, glass uh, material so how opaque this is or like how see-through is determined by um, this number here which is the I think it's the index of refraction and the numbers that you punch in are you know are kind of realistic so like I think it starts at 1.4 is the the default one which is I think standard for glass and then you can change it to give the same sort of refraction that you'd find in water or through a crystal or you know various um, kind of transparent um, substances okay so we'll just leave it like that that's our our glass so we'll take my camera now so I've clicked on that I'm gonna go to view and I'm gonna press this tool on here lock camera to view I'm gonna press 0 on the numpad and I'm looking through and now when I use my navigation tools so I'm just kind of moving around what I'm actually moving is my camera but you need to remember to turn that off you'll know it's active because you've got a red box here around the camera now I don't so now when I zoom in and zoom out I'm not moving the camera so if I render this now so if I go 
render image um, I'll get something like that there's my glass um, right not terribly beautiful but yeah it's okay so that's um, lathing which is spinning something around and that's how you do it so we'll just move that uh, over here and now we're going to look at um, lofting um, now lofting is an uh, yeah it's an interesting uh, way to do things uh, so 3d studio max has a particular way of using lofting um, and it uses spleens or bezier curves uh, and we're not going to explore it we will explore that in the future we'll look at curves but what we're going to look at now is um, basically how to make a skeleton like a shell for an object and then get that object to kind of basically have a skin on it so I'm going to start by adding a plane. So here's my plane. I'm going to press S.5. So I've made it half as big. And you can see it's kind of got a, a weird rendering error here. And that's because it's in exactly the same position as this kind of ground that I've made underneath. So it's, that's kind of a render error. The two of them are occupying the same space. So I'm just going to lift it up a little bit. So I'm going to maybe look from the side. I'm just going to do this by eye. I'm going to go GZ lift it up a little bit and now we don't get that so much now when I go into edit mode I have uh, my plane so what I'm going to do is I want to add some geometry to that so I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my um, edge menu here and click on subdivide and then down here it says number of cuts. So let's increase that to say five. Now there is um, uh, which one of these is subdivide? Smooth edge flatten smooth. Maybe it's not there. Uh, is it part of this? No, it's not. I think it's in there somewhere, but we won't worry about it now. For now, anyway, it's in the edge menu. Um, or we can go subdivide. So I'm not interested in the internal geometry here. So I'm going to press Alt A to deselect and press C. Now C is the circle select tool. So I've, I can scroll my middle mouse wheel in and out to make the circle bigger and smaller. And then I can hold down the left mouse button and just move it over the verts that I want to select. And then when I'm finished, I can just right click. And I can now press X. And, and and delete vertices. So now I'm going to press A to select all of them. And I'm going to press Shift D, which is duplicate. And I'm going to press the Z axis and move this up. I'm going to look from above and I press OR. I'm just going to turn this and in no particular. Um, I'm not typing in a number. I'm just going to turn it and stop there. And now what I want to do is, if I look down here, I've got 24 verts selected. So there's 24 vertices around here. So I'm going to make a new object. Now I'm in edit mode, and I'm going to add a new object. So whatever I add will be part of this object. So like the glass and this kind of um, little area that we're in, are there are two separate objects. And what I'm making here is a separate object. But the, the thing I add now will be part of this object. So I'm going to go Shift A to add. I'm going to add a circle. And then here when it says add circle, the number of verts I want is 24. And why do I want 24? Well, I want it to match the number elsewhere uh, in, no, so in both of these objects. So I'm going to press G and Z and move this up, look from the top. And I'm just going to scale it in a little bit. I just did that by eye. So now let's do this kind of lofting. Um, so this is basically going to be our skeleton. So I have that selected. So another method of selection is I can press B, which is box select. And I can draw a box, and whatever's in the box is selected. So I have my top selected and my bottom. So now I'm going to go edge, bridge edge loops. And it's going to connect my circle and my square. Now I just want the bottom square selected so I'm going to press alt a which is deselect everything and then I'm going to hold down the alt key 
and left click in between two of these and I have selected the entire loop. Now if I do that with the shift key I can select this loop. It's a really really useful way of selecting things. So I hold down shift and alt and then I click in between here and I get that whole loop. So I've only these two loops selected and I can go edge bridge edge loops. Okay. So now I'm going to go back to object mode. So this is a kind of an interesting object because it has um, you know it's square in places and circular in places. So let's do the same with this. Let's go um, shade smooth and then we'll also add a subdivision surface modifier. And now we can see it's quite smooth. And let's replicate our glass here. So let's instead of making a new material we'll pull down this menu and click glass. So now I have my two kind of glass objects. I know it doesn't look much like glass but we're not doing a class of materials. We'll play with them another day. So this is lathing so you draw sort of a, an outline and then you spin it around and this is lofting where you create sort of like a, a skeleton like if you can imagine building um, different kind of ribs of a ship and then covering those ribs uh, to make sort of the hull of your ship so it's quite an interesting way to model and we'll probably end up using neither of these methods um, later on in the year we'll look at different methods to make our models but they're good uh, the bridging edge loops is actually very very helpful um, but you'll th this method here while it's interesting is of kind of um, limited use it's only good for effectively for cylindrical objects um, but you know can come in it's very quick to use so it can be very helpful all right so we'll leave our tutorial there and we will explore both of these in class